Hi, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to review about movie called Harder They Fall. Before that small introduction about the movie is. Going for revenge, outlaw Nat Love saddles up with his gang to take down enemy Rufus Buck, a ruthless crime boss who just got sprung from prison. Jonathan Majors, Idris Elba, Zazi Beats, Regina King, Delroy Lindo, Lakeith Stanfield, RJ Siler, Edie Gathergy, Danielle Deadweiler and Dion Cole star in this action-packed thrill ride that injects new blood into the Old West. The Harder They Fall is directed by James Samuel and produced by Sean, Jay-Z, Carter James Lasseter, James Samuel and Lawrence Bender. Okay now we will start an operation. I mean review. The Harder They Fall is a bloody pleasure, a revenge western packed with memorable characters played by memorable actors, each scene and moment staged for voluptuous beauty and kinetic power. James Samuel, who co-wrote, directed, and scored the movie, has not just studied the works of the directors he emulates, but understands what they were doing with image and sound, and feels it, surely in the way that he feels the craft involved in music he performs and produces under his stage name The Bullets. Samuel uses a very wide screen to frame shots that employ a lot of negative space and contain layers of information you have to focus on to appreciate, and gifts his actors with precious moments where the characters are allowed to listen to each other, silently glance at each other and ponder the next move, often while enduring death stares from enemy's arm to the teeth. Western history buffs should be warned, or at least notified, that while many of the major characters in the story share the same names as actual people who lived and died in the Old West, including Nat Love, Bass Reeves, Stagecoach Mary, Jim Beckhoff, and Cherokee Bill, the events they take part in are mostly made-up nonsense. They bear as much relation to reality as the events of a dreamscape western like The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, The Quick and The Dead, and Posse, to name just three westerns this one cribs from, or a gangster movie like Dillinger and The Untouchables, the major events of which were so ludicrous that they might as well have been taking place on another planet, or in an alternate dimension. But this is a feature of the movie, not a bug. The entire project feels like a bit of a lark or an indulgence, until the point when it wipes the cocky grin off its face, embraces the melodramatic aspects of its central storyline, and becomes an earnest romance, a family tragedy, and a quasi-mythological story about how violence begets more violence, whether it's experienced in a saloon, on dusty streets, or in the privacy of a family home. Jonathan Majors, who came out of nowhere a few years ago to become one of the most reliable of leading men, stars as Nat Love, first depicted in flashback as a terrified child whose mother and father are murdered by the outlaw Rufus Buck Idris Elba. As a parting gift, Buck draws his dagger and inscribes a crucifix into the boy's forehead. It marks the film's hero as meaningfully as the vertical saber scar on the outlaw Josie Wales's face. As an adult, Nat becomes a feared gunslinger and outlaw, and finds himself embroiled in a combination adventure and revenge mission targeting the man who killed his parents. There are quick draws, large-scale gunfights, horse stunts, and chases, a train robbery, bank robberies, and a couple of hand-to-hand -hand brawls with fists, feet and makeshift weapons that are as good as any ever staged in a western, with unabashedly modern fight choreography, though like something out of a Bond or Bourne film. There are also musical numbers, and big sets painted in so many varied and vibrant hues and with so many modern touches that at times we seem to be touring an art installation on western themes. A fight to the death between two characters in a barn is preceded by a walk through brightly dyed fabrics hanging on clotheslines, they look like those large-scale, wrapping, projects that Christo does on landscapes. Samuel and his co-writer Boaz Yarkin, remember the titans, fresh, break the first section of the film into mirrored narratives, each dealing with one of the main criminal gangs, Nats and Ruffuse. At the start of the story proper, Rufus is doing federal prison time for bank robbery, but gets sprung by his right-hand woman Trudy, Regina King, chewing up the screen as a sadistic, sneering baddie. Trudy then leads Ruffu's gang in a boarding action that takes over a U.S. Calvary controlled train where Rufus is being held inside an iron vault as if he were a velociraptor or Hannibal Lecter. It takes a rare actor to justify the build-up that Samuel creates for Rufus, the character's face is not seen in the opening sequence and for another 20 minutes after that, and when Trudy takes over the prison car and opens the vault door, the movie lets us stare into the darkness a bit longer, like infantrymen with binoculars looking for Godzilla's dorsal fins in Tokyo Bay. 
Melba makes the weight worth it, imbuing his majestically cynical, confident character with the free-floating sadness reminiscent of El Indio, the antagonist from, for a few dollars more, whose opium addiction numbed his awareness of his own monstrousness. Unshackled at last, Rufus returns to the desert town he used to run, and finds his old partner Wiley Esco, Dion Cole, giving off Clarence Williams three vibes, lording it over the place as if he were the rightful owner. Rufus makes quick work of Wiley, but he doesn't kill him and it's fun to watch the character come skulking through the film again at various junctures, wheedling and manipulating and double-crossing and doing whatever else he feels he needs to do to get ahead. Most, if not all of the characters have a similarly self-justifying moral code. Not for nothing does Samuel and costume designer Antoinette Messam outfit nearly every character in a black hat, it's not just a sly nod to the film's non-traditional casting, ITA an acknowledgement that nearly every player in this story would be described as the anti-hero or villain if you made them the star of their own project. Samuel fills the screen with characters whose eccentricity, coolness, and layered psychology are conveyed with such economy that it's only when you look back on the picture that you realize that they only had a few minutes of the two-plus-hour runtime to themselves. Although the film's sympathies are always with Nat, a traumatized boy imposing his manly will upon an unjust universe, for the most part it seems more invested in the idea that people are complicated and self-contradicting, which might be why it portrays the jockeying of the two gangs over possession of assorted bank robbery halls not as a battle of good and evil, but a conflict between competing business interests, each party trying to redefine will and appetite as justice. Finally, The Harder They Fall is an instant classic that blends humor, drama and violence all into a black exploitation western. To date, this was easily one of the best films of the year. Especially on Netflix. I had a blast watching it and it only left me wanting to see so much more. I don't care if it's more prequels or sequels, I'll take any continuation within this framework and cinematic universe. It's unapologetic in depicting the classic western genre from a black lens, and I'm here for it. It checks off all the right boxes to me and is totally the worth the watch in either theaters or on Netflix. Don't miss it. Love you, bye.